meet someone who speaks German. A very typical greeting is the simple phrase, Wie geht's? Which literally means, how does it go? And if you talk for a while and share some of your experiences, particularly if you share maybe some disappointments, you might get the response, so gates and labor, so it goes in life. Yes, certainly life goes. It seems some days are just very much like the one before. We know we do have our good days and our not so good days, our ups and our downs. There are happy times and sad times and maybe a lot of days in between where it's just not much new, maybe a lot of just the same as the day before. And sometimes that's just how life goes. Now, our scriptures today speak to us in, in different readings using the image of a shepherd. A shepherd of a flock. The Lord is my shepherd. We've returned to the shepherd who is the guardian of your souls. The shepherd calls the sheep each by name. They follow him. These images of care, these images of protection, point us to one of the central themes of John's Gospel, which is not just about sheep and shepherds, but something much more central in the message of St. John. We might say, well, what are better? Who is being cared for and protected and led? Well, we are. And for what purpose? Jesus says today in the Gospel that we might have life. What is this life that Jesus is giving us? He promises us that if we believe in him, we will have not just life, but have abundant life, even eternal life. But if life is just about kind of making it from one day to the next, just doing what needs to be done in order to survive, it may not be too exciting for us. I think of a young mother I knew years ago raising four children, and one day she said, I think my life is all about food. I'm either shopping for it, putting it away, getting it out, preparing it, cooking it, serving it, cleaning up after it, only to do it all over again for the next meal with this little crowd of youngsters and we're always very hungry. But now someone also asked, well, there's also a lot of time involved in making the money to buy all that food and to provide for those children. But Jesus is not just offering us work and housework. He's not just offering us survival. He's offering us something more. He's come so that we might realize what all of our efforts are really about. So as you would ask that young mother, why do you do all this? Why put all this energy into these meals and the shopping and so forth? She would immediately say that her joy is her love for her family. She loves her children, she loves her family, and this is why she does it. That's what it's all for. And because she was also a woman of faith, she would say that it's not just the joy of loving her family, but the fact that she's loving them in such a way as to share the love of God with them, hoping that someday they will all grow up to know just how much they are loved by God. And that was her greatest joy and her deepest love. So today we might ask ourselves the question, so what is it that fills us with joy? What is it that gives us a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives? Especially in times when life is difficult, when sickness or sadness seems to take over, when we are drained of our energy, when we sometimes question, why is all this happening? We might even begin to lose a sense of purpose. And then little by little, we actually begin to feel our spirits dying within us, even though our bodies continue to function. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, has come to give us life, not just the surviving, not just the existence, but he has come to give us a purposeful life, to give meaning to our lives, to fill our lives with joy. And he laid down his life for us, so that we might no longer live just to exist for a while in this world and then to depart, but rather that we might have life in the fullest possible meaning of that share with us his own experience of what it is to really be alive. And that experience, for Jesus and for us as people of faith, is to be in relationship with God, to experience the great love which God has for us. 
I mentioned on Good Friday that Jesus, as he's presented in John's Gospel, in the moments of his passion, shows a rather profound serenity, as though he's not really all that concerned about his own mortal fate, because he knows he is God's beloved. He knows he has come to do the will of the one who sent him. He has come to love us and to lead us to that loving God. And so also Peter, in reflecting with us of the life and suffering of Jesus, encourages us in our times of being down, being sad, being troubled, times of suffering, but we also recognize how the grace of God is there. Peter wants us to know that perhaps suffering in its greatest meaning is that it opens our minds and our hearts to look for where God is in these moments and to recognize the presence of God in our lives. And that's certainly not easy because at times of difficulty and distress and times of suffering, people are more ready to ask the question, well, where is God in all of this? Has God left us? Has God abandoned us? Why does God allow all these things? Why does God allow suffering and death? It's that age-old question about the existence of evil and trauma and pain in our lives. But the answer that is again given to us again and again in this Easter season is the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Though we should walk in times of darkness, in the shadows of sickness and death, of anxiety and grief, we are also walking in the path of Jesus. He walks with us. He walks before us. He never abandons us, but always leads us and renews us day by day with the gift of his own life and his own love. Wounded, Christ shares in our pain, and risen, Christ is our hope.